Today we have this really cool nonlinear differential equation. And although it looks daunting at first sight, it's worth noticing that the y term is missing explicitly. So in this case, we can make a substitution that'll make our differential equation problem much, much simpler in structure. And the substitution I'm talking about is letting the derivative of y with respect to x equal to u. Now this implies that d squared y by dx squared equals du by dx. Now this has the benefit of changing all the first derivative terms like this one on the left hand side into the u variable. And on the right hand side we have x times the second derivative of y with respect to x which is the first derivative of the new variable u with respect to x. And this cubic term, this cubic first derivative term translates to the cube of the new u variable. So this here is a separable differential equation, which is pretty easy to solve. So on rearranging the terms, we can write this as x times du by dx equal to u cubed plus u. And on further rearrangement, we can write this as 1 by u cubed plus u du equal to 1 by x dx. Now, integrating with respect to the variables either side, this implies that here you have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus some constant of integration that I'm writing in terms of the logarithm because I have log absolute value x on the left-hand side, so that's a lot more convenient later. And on the right-hand side, I need the antiderivative of the reciprocal of u times u squared plus 1, which, of course, requires a partial fraction decomposition. Now for the partial fraction decomposition, we're going to expand this as a divided by u plus bu plus c divided by the quadratic term u squared plus 1. Now this implies that 1 equals a times u squared plus 1 plus b times u plus c times u. So starting off by letting u equal to 0, this implies that 1 equals a times 1 plus this term here collapses to zero. So we have a equal to one. And what about the values of b and c? Well, let's assume that u equals one. So this implies that one equals, the value of a is one as well, and one squared plus one is two, plus b times one is b plus c times one. So this equation implies that b plus c would be equal to 1 minus 2. That's negative 1. Okay, cool. And now what if we let, oh, terribly sorry about that, let u equal to negative 1. Well, in that case, let me just zoom out a bit more. So we have 1 equal to the value of a is once again 1. And negative 1 squared plus 1 is 2 plus negative b plus c times negative 1. Now, what does this equation imply? Well, this implies that b minus c would be equal to, uh, okay, negative 1. Yeah, definitely negative 1. And from these two equations, adding them up gives us 2b equal to negative 2, which implies that b equals negative 1. Okay, cool. So if b equals negative 1, and b plus c equals negative 1, and b minus c equals negative 1, well, this implies that c should be equal to 0. So we have all the required terms for the partial fraction decomposition. So this implies that we can write the reciprocal of u times u squared plus 1 as the value of a was 1, so we have 1 by u, plus negative u divided by u squared plus 1. Returning to the integration problem, we have on the left-hand side log c times the absolute value of x using the properties of the logarithm. And on the right, you have the integral of 1 by u du minus the integral of u times du divided by u squared plus 1. Okay, cool. And this sorts out to log absolute value u minus, we need a factor of one half, so we can write two here. We have one half of the logarithm of u squared plus one, where you don't need the absolute value signs because u squared plus one is a positive real number anyway. 
So again, using the properties of the, lo of the logarithm, you can write the right-hand side as log u minus log square root u squared plus one. Okay, cool. And this implies that you have log c times x equal to log u divided by square root u squared plus one. And exponentiating gives us c times the absolute value of x equal to the absolute value of u divided by the square root of u squared plus one. And remember exactly what the u variable was. Well, we defined u as the derivative of y with respect to x. That means we should solve this equation for u in terms of x and solve the resulting differential equation for dy by dx. So first up, let's square everything. So this implies that you have c squared x squared equal to u squared divided by u squared plus one. And on reciprocation, we can write this as u squared plus one divided by u squared equal to one by c squared x squared. And this here can be simplified as one, uh, one plus one by u squared. So adding negative one on both sides will give me one by u squared equal to one by c squared x squared minus one which of course can be simplified as one by c squared x, squ x squared divided by c squared x squared. So again, on reciprocation and taking the square root, this implies that u equals plus or minus c x divided by the square root of one minus c squared x squared. And re remember exactly what u was. u was in fact dy by dx. So you have another nice separable differential equation to solve. And this implies that you can write this as dy equal to plus or minus cx divided by square root one minus c squared x squared dx. And integrating with respect to the variables either side of the equation gives us y equal to plus or minus integral cx dx divided by square root one minus c squared x squared and let's just make a quick substitution for this integral where we let cx equal to t, which implies that c times dx equals dt. So this implies that y equals plus or minus integral c and dx together make dt. And this x term becomes a t divided by c term. So you can write one by c outside divided by square root one minus uh, t squared. Okay, cool. And for the derivative of one minus t squared, you need a factor of two here and here. Well, specifically you need a factor of negative two, but you have both the uh, positive and negative cases together. So yeah, just switch up the signs. You know, it, it covers both cases. It covers both cases perfectly. So this implies the y equals plus or minus one by two c and that looked like one by two Euler's constant, so this is one by two c times one minus t squared to the one half divided by one half, and these factors of one by two cancel out nicely, and this implies that y equals plus or minus one by c times the square root of one minus t squared, which is c squared times x squared plus another constant of integration c. So there you have it. That's the solution for this sweet, simple differential equation. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.